The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Adam, and today I'm going to solve what I consider the biggest problem of Halloween during the pandemic, which is trick-or-treating. Today I'm going to build a device that eliminates human contact when passing out candy, while stopping your candy from being gone in the first five minutes. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. I'm a very big Halloween person. I've set up displays in my yard for years, and I even did a Halloween fundraiser for my school last year. But probably since May or June of this year, I was very skeptical of what Halloween was going to look like this year. Recently, the CDC and other agencies have announced that trick-or-treating exposes you to viruses more than if you just stayed home and ate your own candy. So that just kind of got me thinking, you know, maybe I can just leave out a bowl of candy just for the kids to have at it. But I was a kid at one point, and I remembered that that situation is very easy to take advantage of. So that candy, as a candy provider, might be gone in 5 to 10 minutes. So that gave me the idea to make a dispenser that can recognize human faces and then dispense a serving of candy when a bag or hand or even a um, container was present. So this would eliminate human contact and it would um, decrease uh, the candy consumption by the kids. I plan to accomplish this using OpenCV and a Pi camera to detect when a face is present and then an ultrasonic sensor or a distance sensor to detect when a hand, container, or bag is close enough to the opening that the candy can be dispensed. I had a few different candy extrusion ideas, and I actually researched um, ice dispensers to see if I could replicate one, but I think an auger dispenser might be the best idea. I would turn a stepper motor a precise amount, therefore dispensing a precise amount of candy. I would also use some kind of display to indicate the amount of people detected in a group. This mechanism would be accomplished using a small Adafruit stepper motor. I chose this to keep the build a little smaller so that the device can consume less power. And this project required several different 3D printed parts. The main one needed was the massive auger. But I first designed an enclosure in Fusion before realizing the insane amount of filament and time it would be needed to print. So I quickly shifted to a plywood enclosure, which was designed in Illustrator from the 3D models I previously made. These models were cut out on an X-carve so that the side links could be precise, but once the first batch were cut, I realized how impractical the size was getting. Hypothetically, this design would work fine, but it wasn't until I sliced the designed auger when I realized this was just not going to work. <laughs> like the previous enclosure ideas, at the scale this auger would take a few days just to print one part of the auger, and a crazy amount of filament. So I went back to the drawing board and realized that the width of the enclosure is adequate to fit the types of candy I have, but the length was not entirely needed. So I went back and trimmed the main side pieces off to make the enclosure smaller. And this <laughs> is also why some of the um, side corners look prettier than others, because some were cut with the nice X-carve, while others were trimmed with a jigsaw. But once the sides were trimmed to be a more practical size, the design was taking shape, and I found an auger design on Thingiverse which I scaled and edited for this project. When I sliced this piece, I realized it would fit entirely on my print bed, but it was also going to take a crazy amount of filament and time if it was printed vertically, and, and that's mainly because it was going to need supports almost everywhere. So instead, I cut the model in two and added a few cylinders for the two pieces to intersect after they were printed and so the prints could be made in the horizontal position instead of the vertical position, and that would require less supports. This saved me a lot of filament and time, despite this being printed in two pieces instead of one. Also, I both designed and um, found a few models for this project on Thingiverse to help out. I found this neat Pi camera mount that I printed to allow the camera to articulate. This was mainly to allow the best viewing angles for the camera, and I also designed a small case for the LCD and Fusion to fit on the front of the device. And I found and printed a um, pretty cool ultrasonic mount on Thingiverse for the ultrasonic sensor. The main library I'll be using in this project is called OpenCV. It is widely used pretty much to detect anything. 
It can detect from a person or a particular face or even license plates. But essentially it takes a photo or a live video and compares it to XML files or cascades. Cascades can really be anything for OpenCV to look for. But in this case, we're going to use a default front face as our cascade. And we're gonna use this to look for anyone walking by. Not just looking for a particular face like facial recognition. I used some basic OpenCV code just to get me started with cascades. And it was fairly simple. This project doesn't really use much from OpenCV so it wasn't a big learning curve. I first had to display the face that was detected by putting a rectangle around the face, and then I then added an if statement with the len function in a way that counts the number of people in front of the device. Len functions returns the number of items in an object, which is really returning the number of faces detected. For instance, when no faces are detected, len returns zero. So I'm really just saying if at least one face is detected, wait a few seconds, check again, wait a few seconds, Check again, just to make sure the person is still there. And that's really just because of the camera quality and sometimes it just sees things in a background when there's no face there. So that's kind of trying to get rid of that error. And then I'm saying display that on the LCD to show the number of people in a crowd. And after that, I have code for the stepper motor and ultrasonic sensor to detect when a bowl or bag is present. And I did consider adding an LCD just to show people that they're being seen like the rectangle around my face earlier. When the len function already identifies the number of faces in a group, I didn't really see there was a reason to have it. So a simple 2x16 display is perfectly adequate just to display the number of people detected. Hi, my name is James and this is my electronics workbench. Together, we host Workbench Wednesdays. It is a show where I review electronics tools and equipment. Whether you are on a hobbyist budget or trying to equip a professional workstation, we've got you covered. Look for new episodes on Wednesdays and come connect with me at element14.com slash workbench Wednesdays. All right, so here is my program that I made for this project. It's, it's a little long, but it's not very complicated. I'm, I'm gonna go over some of the logic elements that I implemented, which was really just to help with um, you know the camera and just combining everything all together. If this is, I'm using a frontal face um, cascade to just detect faces, and that's really what OpenCV is going to be comparing the live um, video feed to that. And then I'm also declaring just a lot of variables. Some of them are just the pins that I'm using, while others are just counters or um, variables just to detect like the distance that I did earlier for the ultrasonic sensor. Uh, all these um, pins are all used for the LCD screen. I declare that there. I find the um, Adafruit LCD library very helpful because I only have to enter in these lines and then I can just control the LCD very easily. So I would recommend that. And then this is my loop for just about the entire program, um, just to uh, just to do everything, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the start of it is just the OpenCV stuff where it's looking for the faces um, in the live video feed. So I'm essentially saying if there is more than one face um, in the live video feed, wait two seconds, check again, wait two seconds, check again. And I'm doing this because I'm kind of finding out that the camera I chose might not be the best quality for this. It's working fine, but I'm basically doing this several times because I've had times where the camera recognizes a face in a background where there is no humans. <laughs> so I'm doing this to basically let it double check itself because um, it doesn't do it consistently, it's doing it just occasionally. So that's why this is really just stopping it from recognizing, recognizing things that aren't faces. And then uh, next I have my while loop and that's, you know, once I've already double checked that yes, there is definitely a face in the background, then I'm using a while loop just to say, um, you know, while there's more face, more than one face, then I'm displaying the amount of faces on the um, LCD screen. And then this is the part with the ultrasonic sensor. I'm calling that method earlier, checking to see if something is 10 centimeters or less away. And then I'm setting off the animatronic using the um, relay pins. And then this is the code I'm using for the stepper motor where I just have a um, set amount of steps I'm letting it turn. And again, I've kind of adjusted that, trying to um, set the amount of candy dispense. But again, I can adjust that with the steps. And then uh, I'm subtracting counter by one. So counter is already set to the amount of people um, found. So if there are two people, uh, it deducts it by one and then it comes back up here and says, okay, I guess there is still one person left and then it does it again. 
So if there are two people initially, um, after it runs through one time, dispenses one round of candy, then it goes back up here and it says there are one, one person left basically. And it's just doing the entire thing over again. And then these are my else, um, else statements that are really just co corresponding with the if statements earlier where it's double checking itself. And I'm just saying for every time that it doesn't see, or it doesn't, it doesn't see a face, then I'm just saying, you know, and then it's just displaying the same standby statement, which is, you know, just step in front of the dispenser. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Here I have wired up and programmed the Raspberry Pi just to run one part of this program, um, particularly just to look at the relationship between the ultrasonic sensor and the stepper motor. And this is um, mainly, you know, if the person gets recognized, you know, as a person with the camera, then the sensor starts to look for um, is the bag or container close enough um, for it to dispense. And I think I have that at five centimeters right now, but of course I can adjust that after or later at least. And, you know, right now, you know, if the container is five centimeters away, then the um, stepper motor starts dispensing the candy. And that's um, working well, but I also had a fun little idea to stop my candy from being gone in five minutes or an hour or however long. Um, I have it so that if the container is just still there after it dispenses, it actually has a five or 10 second delay. I can adjust that later. Um, just to look at, hey, is this person still there? Hopefully not. Because yeah, if they see uh, you know it's not dispensing after it's dispensed one amount, hopefully they will move on. But if, if not, it's okay. But that's hopefully just to stop um, everyone from just getting all the candy at once. So that will hopefully stop that. But I also um, had that idea with facial recognition, but I thought that, you know, I know some people are uncomfortable with that, which I understand. So this is working um, great right now. I think the ultrasonic sensor is probably the best idea. And I think the next thing I need to do with this project is just to solder everything to a PCB um, and then wire, you know, the LCD to the pie. I had one last quick idea to add to this project, and that was a jump scare element. I own several different um, store-bought animatronics and they give a pretty good startle. So I'm thinking, is there any way I can implement those animatronics into this device? When the candy is dispensed, I'm going to trigger an animatronic with a relay. And this will give a pretty good startle and I'm thinking I'm only gonna do it for the first person in a group. And I might change that in the, in the code because I'm thinking after the first person, I think the other people in the group already have seen what it's going to do. So I don't think there's any reason for that. I might leave it, I'm not really sure yet but that's very easy to change. But for now, I think I'm just gonna have it startle the first person in a group, but I might add a mode later for the entire group to have a jump scare or something like that. Wiring and mounting the relay was a breeze, but now most of the GPIO pins are being used. And I'm, I mean, that's fine, but I'm glad the relay, um, I could add that to the project, but I was very worried that I was not gonna have enough pins. But with the relay, the dispenser can set off practically any store-bought animatronic with a three and a half millimeter jack. This PCB, it got insane when I was soldering it up. And it's definitely not my best work, but it does the job. It was difficult to find a spot for the ultrasonic sensor resistors needed and the connector while making space for the Adafruit stepper motor driver, header for the LCD, and the massive female connectors for the Raspberry Pi. Cause I'm basically making this PCB a hat for the Raspberry Pi. The stepper motors are run at 12 volts, while the Adafruit board only takes three and the LCD and ultrasonic sensor both run on five. Hmm, step in front of dispenser. This must be a candy dispenser. Maybe I should put my hand under it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's been quite a few. <laughs> I think this project turned out really well. It solved the problem of human contact when passing out candy, and it um, is stopping my candy from being gone in five minutes. So that's always good. If I was to change one thing about this project, I might swap out the stepper motor. I realized that the Adafruit one that I'm currently using, I knew it was small just by the size, 
but I think I underestimated the amount of force needed to push out the candy. So I think a more beefy stuffer motor might be the best bet because right now it, it is kind of making a noise when it's dispensing, which is, I, wanna, I don't know if it's normal, but it's working. So I'm thinking maybe a more um, beefy stuffer motor might be the best idea. Are you making any Halloween electronics projects this year? If so, let me know at the Element 14 community at element14.com presents. I'll see you next time.